I'm Brandon Rush, and today I'm going to tell you how you can get a $100 head start on your NFL prop betting and get you halfway to a win in week one of the NFL season. This is Bets and Breakfast, presented by the Fat Jack Sports Service. Happy Sunday and welcome to Bets and Breakfast presented by the Fat Jack Sports Service. I am your host, Brandon Rush. Every Sunday morning, we'll be here on YouTube chowing down on breakfast foods and dishing out NFL prop bets that I'm going to play myself for that week's action. If you are on this channel, you are probably a sports better. If you want to be a better better, you've come to the right place. Obviously, prop betting is nothing new, but I believe there is value in prop betting and it's an undervalued market that hasn't fully been tapped into yet, especially here in the sports media world. So here we are. First things first, we promote responsible gambling. If you're gambling to pay rent or buy food or pay child support, stop. Just save yourself. Stop. Set aside a budget. Play within your tax bracket and know when to walk away when you need to. You've enjoyed watching sports well before you even knew what the hell a parlay was. You'll be fine if you need to hit the pause button for a while. So now on to the fun stuff. Every week, I'm going to be here giving out my favorite prop bets for Sunday's action. You can follow if you like. You can fade it if you like. I don't care. You're grown. You can do whatever the hell you want. I've made some decent money over the last few years, developed a math model that seems to be working, and I found a way to make money on top of, on top of the Fat Jack's football selections. Please keep in mind, this is for funsies, okay? Do we want to win? Of course we do. Are we going to brag about it when we win? Of course we will. Am I going to come on here and complain when I lose? Of course I will. It's I'm a child of the internet age. Of course I'm going to whine. But I know accountability is one thing that is lacking from a lot of sports handicappers in the social media world. But if working with the Fat Jack for the better part of 20 years has taught me anything, it's that honesty works every damn time. So how do we win money on props? Well, how does a $100 head start sound? We've partnered with Prize Picks, the best legal way to play player props in states where sports betting isn't yet legal, like California, Texas, Florida, 30 states across the country, and parts of Canada. It's daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times your entry. There's no pools against 6,000 people. There's no head-to-head -head matchups against a nerd with 14 spreadsheets. It's just you versus the projection. Go to prizepicks.com or head to your app store and download the Prize Picks app. Now, I bet you're asking, what about this $100 head start? When you sign up at Prize Picks, use promo code FATJACK. When you do, you get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100, but only when you use our promo code FATJACK, all one word. I put a link down in the description of this video so you can access it at any time. So promo code fat Jack, get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. If you know your limits and your limits only $20, when you use that promo code, you get $20. If you're immature and you want to deposit $69, fine. You get 69, whatever. Why price picks? Most sports books won't allow you to take a prop from this game and a prop from this game and hook them together especially if they're from separate games. The best part with prize picks is that you can combine sports. We are just going to focus on the NFL on this show, but you can play college and pro football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, golf, NASCAR, tennis, whatever you want. It's all available for you at prize picks. So now that I've explained to you where and how I plan on making money this football season, let's dive into my preseason plays for the NFL. This year, I'm starting the season with $210 in my prize picks account. It's an odd amount, but hear me out. I've allotted $10 budget per NFL game week. Plus, I've pieced together three preseason entries that I'm going to roll with. I have a plan for the playoffs and the Super Bowl, but you'll learn about that more as it gets closer. So let's dive into my three preseason plays. I'm going to start with quarterbacks because everybody knows that in the NFL, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance. We are going to start with quarterbacks, and I have three quarterbacks whose projections on passing yards 
I am very high on, and I'll tell you why. The first is going to be Kyler Murray, then Patrick Mahomes, and then Baker Mayfield. Guys I have a lot of experience with growing up in Big 12 country. I've seen these guys play a lot. I've followed their careers. I kind of know what to expect going into this year. Obviously, Kyler had the interesting offseason getting his contract. Patrick Mahomes finally healthy, but lost some weapons. And Baker Mayfield in a new team, a new city. What's that going to mean for his passing yard totals? Well, here we go. Kyler Murray over 4,000 and a half yards. 4,000 is the sort of magic number for NFL quarterbacks and passing yards this year as to whether they're good or whether they're bad. It was not that long ago. 3,000 yards was an amazing number. But with 4,000 yards, that's like the minimum threshold right now for good quarterback versus bad quarterback, it seems. Even though Kyler's going to be without DeAndre Hopkins for a while to start the season, he's left with an aging A.J. Green, Rondell Moore, who really hasn't grown into that role. I think Kyler Murray's going to have a monster season, and it's going to be out of necessity because – they're not going to be able to run through a lot of teams. They're going to be playing from behind a lot, and that's just going to mean Kyler's going to have to throw the ball a ton. So I'm going to play over 4,000 and a half yards for Kyler. Patrick Mahomes, under 4,600 and a half yards. Obviously, that Andy Reid offense, high flying, but the loss of Tyreek Hill, I think, is something that this team has not prepared for. I, I fully trust Andy Reid to find a way as the season progresses to make that a better process and make it a better game plan. But I don't know how removing a 1300 yard receiver out of that offense helps. Everyone's going to be targeting Travis Kelsey. I sure as hell don't think Marquez Valdez Scantling and Juju Smith Schuster are going to be able to fill the role of Tyree kill. They might, their yardage totals might do it, but from what they do from a gameplay standpoint, no freaking way. Give me Mahomes under 4,600. And then Baker Mayfield ran out of Cleveland, even though he took him to a playoff win for the first time in a generation. Baker Mayfield, though, going from Cleveland to Carolina. You would think it might be a better spot, although who the hell is he going to throw the ball to? DJ Moore is good. Christian McCaffrey, obviously a fantastic running back. But McCaffrey's the workhorse of that offense. They're going to be trying to slow games down, make sure that Baker doesn't play hero ball too much. Although in week one of the NFL, he's going to go insane, especially against his former team. This is an opportunity, I think, for uh, for him. And we'll talk about that on next week's show. Um, I have a projection already laid out for Baker Mayfield in week one of the NFL. And I can guarantee you he's going to be in my week one projections and my week one plays at price picks. But Baker, under 3,600 yards. I think they're going to be feeding Christian McCaffrey. There's not enough weapons there. I like Robbie Anderson. There's a bunch of things potentially there. But with that offensive coordinator, ugh, no, sorry. Bake under the total. So $10 on this selection. Uh, all three are going to hit uh, with the power play at price picks. This is going to pay $50, so a 5 to 1 return on a $10 bet. Now, why only 10 bucks? Partially, I don't like having a ton of money tied up all season long. This is, I mean, this isn't going to pay off until January. Once the regular season ends, boom, that's when that money's going to kick in. But until then, granted, I have a budget, but I don't want that money being tied up for a long time. On to my second and the biggest entry of the NFL preseason, I have a five player entry which is going to pay 10 to 1 when it hits. So a $100 entry, excuse me, excuse me, a $10 entry pays 10 to 1 on a five player entry. It's going to pay $100 at the end of the season. And it's going to be a little bit contrarian and I'm putting a lot of faith in a quarterback in a new location. First we'll start off Jonathan Taylor. Obviously took the world, the NFL world by storm a year ago rushing for 1,800 yards, was the heart and soul of that Colts offense. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to have an amazing career. I think he's going to have an amazing year. He's not going over 1,450 and a half yards. Let me tell you why. Matt Ryan coming into that offense, a competent quarterback, is going to take pressure off of Jonathan Taylor, yes, but Matt Ryan likes to throw to the running backs. He likes to throw to the tight ends. He has a receiver who is also in this projection, also in this entry, that I'm a big fan of and I think is going to be the number one receiver for Matt Ryan this upcoming season. So Jonathan Taylor, not going to be relied on as much in the running game. 
he's still going to get 25, 28, 30 carries at times in Frank Reich's offense. But there's going to be so much more passing game with a competent adult quarterback that they haven't had last year that I think Taylor's numbers are going to go down just by nature. A player whose numbers are going up, Michael Pittman Jr., 1,025 and a half yards is the projection for Pittman this season. And let me tell you, if Matt Ryan plays the way I think he can, Michael Pittman Jr. is going to be the recipient of a lot of passes thrown his direction. And because teams are going to try to shut down Taylor, Pittman and some of these other receivers are going to have monster years. So Michael Pittman Jr. over his projection of 1,025 and a half yards. We head out west. For the Las Vegas Raiders, Josh Jacobs is going to have, I think, a monster year because Devontae Adams has been added to that team. So we're seeing players get boosts from players coming in at other positions. Why is Devontae Adams being added going to help Josh Jacobs rush for over 750 yards this season? Think about it. Devontae Adams can play anywhere on the field. He can play in the slot. He can play on either side. He can go deep. He can, you can run the screen game with him. You've got Darren Waller, one of the top four, five tight ends in the NFL, and I think hasn't found his ceiling yet. Hunter Renfro, slot dude, can do everything. If you're a defense in the AFC West or anybody on the Raiders schedule, who are you going to defend? I'm worried about Waller. I'm worried about Devontae. I'm worried about Hunter Renfro. Josh Jacobs, monster year coming, I think, rushing the football. So I've got a lot of faith in him as well to carry the ball, carry the workload, and stay healthy. That's going to be another thing. Also, if he has any fallout from the DUI arrest, that's going to suck. For the final two picks, I'm going to stay in the AFC West. I'm going to take a pair of Denver Broncos wide receivers. Denver Broncos wide receivers. You know how scary that is as a better to say, hey, yeah, with what the Broncos have done the last few years, let's throw some money on them full term for the full season. The addition of Russell Wilson, though, I think is going to be a huge component for that uh, for that offense. And obviously, Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton are going to be the recipients of a lot of passes thrown their way. Judy's projection, 925 and a half yards. Cortland Sutton, 900 and a half yards. I think they both have monster years. I would be interested to see, uh, and I haven't just yet seen yards projections for uh, the tight ends. I really thought when the trade went down that Noah Fant was going to be the immediate uh, recipient of a lot of passes from Russ. But of course, he went to Seattle in that deal. But Judy and Sutton are going to have monster years because Russell Wilson continues to play at an MVP caliber level and with the monster contract he just signed last week needs to play as the second highest paid quarterback in the NFL. So Judy, Sutton, Jacobs, Pittman, and Taylor, that is my five-player entry, 10 to 1 on the power play, $100 coming to us at the end of the season when that thing wraps up. And finally, no team can be complete without a solid defense. And I've got three dudes who I think can make us some money this year on price picks. It is a three-player entry. I have a linebacker, an edge guy, and a defensive back. Bobby Wagner goes from Seattle to the Rams. The Rams like to funnel a bunch to that middle linebacker position. And the projections on price picks include tackles and and assists so this number is going to seem astronomically high but when you consider it's both those things combined it's a very gettable number and wagner's done it before over 142 and a half granted he's an older guy i believe his 12th year in the league he's obviously got to stay healthy and engaged in order to get this number but i think the rams are going to be a a spectacular team you got aaron donald up front eating up double teams bobby wagner huge year over 142 and a half tackles Staying out West, Max Crosby. We talked earlier about additions to a team helping another player. The Raiders got Chandler Jones. He's going to be coming off one edge, going to be getting a lot of attention from offensive lines. Max Crosby on the other end, primed for a huge year. Over 9.75, because of course you can get half sacks in the NFL. Over 9.75 sacks is the number 
I think because Chandler Jones is such a stud and the rest of that defense has many pass rushing opportunities, playing passing teams like the Chargers, like the Chiefs, like the Broncos, six times a year, plenty of opportunities for those guys to get numbers. So give me Max Crosby over nine and a half. A power play on that is going to pay five to one. So a $10 entry is going to pay $50 at the end of the season. So there you have it. Three selections that I've, uh, that I'm putting out there, $10 a piece when they go three and O or really, I guess, uh, 11 and O because we're going to hit all those. Uh, we're going to get $200 back off $30, which is pretty nice return for uh, a minimal investment in the NFL season. Obviously, you can play each of these picks individually. Obviously, some of the odds aren't as good. For example, the Jerry Judy over 905 receiving yards, minus 125. A little rich for my blood when you're playing props. I don't want to pay 1250 to win 10. Play like 10 to win uh, win a hundy. That's for sure. Um, other NFL props that I like, you're not going to find these on price picks. These will be props that you will get from your sports book. Uh, if you're on DraftKings, which is where I pulled these numbers from, uh, these are available and you can hook some of these together. George Pickens, I think, has an opportunity to be a NFL rookie of the year, potentially a pro bowler in his rookie season. And this is a big if, and I and I hate putting ifs on things, but if Mitchell Trubisky doesn't suck, Pickens is going to have a monster year. If he is Mitchell Trubisky, Pickens isn't going to have 35 catches and be an also ran, just the way it is. Uh, but 9-1, to one, I think there's still some good value there. A lot of people got tied up in that video from early in the year where he just dump trucked a defensive back who's probably working at UPS now. Sure, whatever, but I think there's a lot of talent there. I think he has a strong opportunity, and again, a lot hinging, a lot hinging on Mitchell Trubisky being competent and being healthy, or Kenny Pickett being a stud, but George Pickens, 9-1, to one, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Aiden Hutchinson. Dude, this dude can play. He is good. I'm excited to see what he can do in a full season, and with a pretty – solid defense around him that's an opportunity i think for him to probably take home the defensive rookie of the year it's a it's a bit chalky i admit but four and a half to one uh, why not now DraftKings actually allowed a parlay on on this these preseason awards even though it's a prop they they let it come through plus 5400 for both of them hooked together so if you're feeling fancy Go for it. The last one I'm going to take a flyer on, and it's a guy who was absolutely electric in the NFL preseason, Malik Willis, 50 to 1 to be the offensive rookie of the year. Obviously, Malik, not a starter in the NFL right now. Ryan Tannehill, the starting quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, but that offense is going to struggle because they lost A.J. Brown. They don't have a lot of weapons for Ryan Tannehill to throw the ball to, and everybody and their dog is going to be keying on Derrick Henry. When that offense struggles, Mike Vrabel is going to be faced with a with a difficult decision. Hey, either play the kid or potentially lose your job. Play the kid, potentially miss out on the playoffs. Malik Willis comes in, I can see, probably by week seven or eight because the Titans schedule, not easy the first few months of the year. Malik Willis comes in, shows moments of brilliance and then at some point the season's going to be on the line they're going to turn it over to Malik and he's going to ball out for the better part of two months the fact that he's not going to play all 17 games probably hurts this opportunity but I want to be in I want to be the one that said I told you so Malik Willis NFL offensive rookie of the year at a 50 to 1 number it's hard not to throw a little bit at so those are just some extras on top of everything that is available to you uh, here on Bets and Breakfast. Uh, next week, when we're handing out NFL Week 1 selections, pancakes right here in my belly, probably on my shirt. It's going to happen. NFL Week 1 obviously starts this weekend. And we're going to get you started with a freebie going live this Sunday. Tom Brady passing yards. Price Picks has adjusted his passing yards this week to 0 0.5. That means if Tom Brady throws for more than zero yards, zero, goose egg, if he completes a pass, then gets hurt, or whatever, 
let's let's hope not. He's 45. He may crack at any point. But the Brady Free Square is live until Sunday night. So if you're putting your packages together, you're putting your entries together, and you decide, you know what, I need one more to take it from a four-player pick to a five-player entry. Throw Brady over .5 passing yards and get a freebie. Let's say you only have one stat you like this week. You only have one player where you're like, hey, he's going to score a touchdown. Oh, but I don't know what to play with it. Tom Brady, half a yard, boom, 2-0, and you win, you're done, and you're out. So I've set you up with a $100 head start for your NFL props and got you halfway to a win in week one of the NFL season, all thanks to Price Picks. Don't forget to use our promo code FATJACK when you sign up. Get that 100% deposit bonus up to $100. And let's have a season. The NFL is here. We finally made it through what seems like one of the longest summers of all time. And now we're ready to roll. So join us next Sunday. I will have a... Yeah, four, maybe five player pick for an entry next week to throw another $10 at on price picks and see if there are any other props out there that are going to turn us a profit, make us some money here with the Fat Jack Sports Service. I'm Brandon Rush. This is Bets and Breakfast. Next week, waffles. <laughs>